Show starts in two minutes. Your attention, please. Monsters do have their place in the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies. Hello, darlings. Bunny Galore here, the queen of the cult movies. I'm here with the vicar. Hello, Bunny. <laughs> and we're in a very naughty mood today. <laughs> We've decided to play a practical joke on our cameraman, Kevin. <laughs> He's just stepped out, so... Ooh, ooh, he's going back in. Do it now, Bunny, do it now. Hi, Kevin. Hello, Kevin. Kevin, I'm afraid... Um, oh, really bad news. Yeah, um, a virus has wiped out the entire human population. That means we're the last three people left alive, and uh, that also means I'm the last woman on Earth. <laughs> what do you think about that? Rude. Anyway, darlings, that leads me neatly into our film for today. The Last Woman on Earth. Settle down with a nice strong cup of tea and enjoy The Last Woman on Earth. Shouldn't we call an ambulance? And now, on with the show. Colorado. you want to bet on the last one? No, thank you. Oh, come on. It'll make it a little more interesting. Isn't it interesting enough? Well, I thought you wanted to see Puerto Rico. Well, this is part... It's the part you wanted to see, Harold. Yes, sir, look at it. Yo tomo cinco. Lo tomo. Aquí están los diez que le debo, señor. Harold! Harold! Martin, you're early. You're late. Then you're in trouble, remember? Oh, I haven't seen today's. Thank you. Boy, they really make me sound bad. Indicted. You know, that word really gets me. 
sounds like it really means something. Maybe it does. Harold, really, you ought to worry a little bit about this. I never worry, Martin. I hire brilliant young lawyers like you to do that for me. Oh, you want to make a bet? This is the last fight. No, thanks. Well, I do. There goes my bookie now. Cigarette. I'm Ev Gern. Harold's wife? Occasionally. Thank you. I fail to see the point of two animals clawing each other to death around a ring. I'm with you. Hey. These bookies are a bunch of cheap crooks. What happened? Did you meet your match? <laughs> I said cheap. Oh, have you two met? We introduced ourselves. I got married between trials. Martin and his firm defended me the last year when the same thing happened. It's the government's idea of a, an annuity. Every year they sue me. It's called the Harold Gurn Vacation Fund. I bet that one. You bet that one? That one. Yo, win. Oh! And what is it? I spilled my drink. I'll have to change. Okay, hon. Okay. You wait here. I'll be right back. I gotta collect my bet. And we'll find a place to talk. Then we'll find a place to talk. Hey, Rowdy. Dang, the winner. Pay the line. Coming out again. Hey, Claire, who rocks? Harold, this isn't my idea of a place to talk. Hey, You're too conservative, my boy. New rock. Seven, winner. Winner seven, pay the line. Couldn't be better. Couldn't be better. Let it all ride. Not again. Hey, Couldn't Claire, be better. Five. Look, Harold, I don't know what's gotten into you, but I did not come down here to watch you watch cockfights and play craps. Now, your partner thinks... My you're partner going... thinks... Morty thinks... It's I who make the money so that Morty can think and have me tested on my vacation. Seven, Luther. Take a line. Luther, seven. All right, all right, all right. Wow. Come on. I got some briefs up in the room. Look him over, and then we'll talk. Fine. Now, really, Harold, you've got to pay more attention to the law. Martin, I'll give you odds. If you follow every law in the book, you'll be broke or dead in a week. You look paler than you did last year. You worry too much, Martin. With clients like you, how can I help it? How's your golf? You know how it is, Harold. I'm, uh, getting older. You are aging. Ev will give you the briefs. Well, where are you going? I gotta win my money back. Come in. Hi. I, uh, see you changed your dress. Mm-hmm. Join me, won't you? I'd like to, but I, uh, I have to pick up Harold's briefs. Martin. How do you like your work? In fact, how do you like your life? I like it, Mrs. Gurn. Which, your work or your life? Both. Is there a difference? I think so. Harold doesn't. Mrs. Gurn, I, uh, could you tell me where Harold has those briefs? I think I have a captive audience. Did anybody ever tell you you 
look like a Martin. That's nice to know. More and more. You look like a Martin. down from there. You're not much of a gambler, are you? I think you could make anyone look conservative if you wanted to, Mrs. Gern. I think I'm going to get morbid. Point of fact, I think I have a death wish. In point of fact, you'll get your wish unless you come down from there. We are not amused. Watch the wine. If I'd done that, I wouldn't be here now. Don't you think you've gone far enough? Nonsense. There isn't enough. I've so little to say, and nobody will listen. Harold, God bless him, has a pretty selective ear. Please understand, this isn't my usual manner of meeting. I understand. Really. Feeling this morning, sunshine. All right. Ah, don't be an old grouch. What could be better than mixing a little pleasure with business, huh? Ev, don't you be an old grouch. I'll tell you what, we'll take a little morning cruise, a little morning dip, a little breakfast and business, more or less in that order. Did you look over those briefs? Harold, of course I looked over those well, briefs. Well, am I innocent or am I guilty? Of course you're not guilty, Harold. That's not the point. I mean, you may have stretched the law a little bit, but you're not guilty. Besides, even if you were, you know you'd never go to jail. As long as you keep your money. Martin, you don't understand. I like making money. Harold, how about a swim? Good. Martin? No, thanks, Harold. Oh, come on, I insist. Wash some of the meanness out of you. Besides, I've got some diving equipment you ought to try out. Manuel, we'll stop here. Come on, Martin. Let's go. We'll change. <laughs>
hurt bad? Not too. Help! Help! Oh, looks like I'll have to carry both of you. Bad night. Something's wrong. Put your mask back on. Maybe we come up too fast or something. Leave it on till we get back to the ship. He couldn't breathe. Martin? Martin! There's something in the air if you breathe it. How long are these tanks good for? An hour. Do you have any spares? Get them. I'll try the radio. Leave the tank on. DF calling San Juan Harbor. San Juan Harbor. Harold, there's nothing. We gotta go back to town as soon as we can. I'll get it started, you take care of Evelyn. Can't get it to fire. Are they wet? I don't think I'll get it started. Let's take the spare tanks and row to shore. We're not too far from town, then we'll figure out what to do there. on playing the same record on that thing. Why don't they at least advertise or something? How much time we got left in these tanks? 20 minutes. We'll never make it to town by then, not by the beach. Let's cut straight through the jungle and try it. At least we'll satisfy our curiosity. Off. I can't have if anything comes through, we've got to hear it. Harold, we gotta take these things off now. Martin, if we do. It doesn't matter, they're empty. To hell with it.
Harold, what are you doing? Harold! Harold! What is it? Martin, answer me. Martin, answer me. Martin, will you stop sniffling the flowers and answer there's me? There's air, Harold. Well, of course there's air. No, not of course. The match wouldn't light, now it would. Something took the oxygen out of the air, and now it's back. But why, Martin? Why now? Green leaves. Green leaves. This stuff gives off oxygen. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong? I'm a little dizzy. I guess there's still not much air. Martin, what about the town? I guess we'd better take a walk over there and see how bad things really are. Take it slow. If we're not careful, we could pass out again. Okay, let's go. Let's take this one and go back to the hotel. Come on, Ev. No, I won't move. I won't move. Not Ev, if I have to see Ev. anymore. I won't move. Ev, come on. I won't, Harold. Hello, darlings. Bunny Galore here, the queen of the cult movies. I hope you're enjoying our movie for today, The Last Woman on Earth. Bunny, what would you do if you were the last woman on Earth? Hmm. Gosh, Vicar, that's a good question. Well, I think I'd like to live in a castle and be surrounded by ponies and fawns and doves. <laughs> How about yourself? Oh, I'm not too sure. I'd have to have a little think about it. Oh, OK, then. Well, while you have a little think, we'll go to the commercials. We'll be right back, darlings, after these messages. <laughs> Hey, Mom. Yes, you. Why fuss and fret about dinner? Why not have it right here? Yes, this drive-in offers everyone in the family a real picnic treat for dinner. We've got delicious sandwiches with all the trimmings and your other dinner favorites, plus whatever you want to drink, hot or cold. Come early before the show starts, or eat while you're being entertained, or at intermission time. So why fuss? Give your family a tasty dinner at this drive-in. After that, I would create a new species from pussycats, ocelots, and llamas, and I would interbreed them, and then I would populate the world, and they would all worship me. They would become my followers, and I would become their king. <laughs> 
Well, thank you, Vicar, for um, <laughs> telling me that and uh, letting me know what you'd do if you were the last person left on Earth. <laughs> anyway, darlings, Bunny Galore here, the queen of the cult movies, and now back to our film, The Last Woman on Earth. Operator? 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 There's nothing. We've got to do something, Martin. I gotta have a drink. Nobody will be drinking in here for a long time. Scotch, please. Martin, what happened? Bigger and better bomb. Act of God, what difference does it make? The results are the same. Harold, take it easy. What for? I don't know. I really don't know. Martin, we've got to do something. Maybe we can go back to New York. And see seven million bodies stinking up the streets? No, thanks. It isn't everywhere. Harold, there was nothing on the radio and nothing on the phone. Now, we should have heard something from somewhere. And you can bet that whatever happened, we didn't get the worst of it. Shall we stay here? You've got somewhere to go? Now listen, Martin, I don't like the idea of being in a world of dead bodies any more than you do. We can't stay here. In a couple of days, the stench alone would choke us. Hey, Morty. He's got a house on the tip of the island. Let's get going. I don't like it here. And chisel. Your wish is my command. Must we break in? Probably best if we just sleep tonight, talk about it tomorrow. Martin, there's a bedroom up the study you can use. Oh, Mrs. Gern. Thank you. Good night.
Testing, 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 Martin. Yes. Martin, meet me in the study as soon as you can. Martin, can you hear me? Yes. What hit you? The end of the world, Mr. Gern. Now listen, Martin. I think we ought to get together and agree that we should keep that kind of talk to a minimum. That isn't just talk. Look, Martin. The reason why I called you up here is because I think we ought to decide just exactly what we're going to do. Harold, there's probably enough canned food here to last years. And if we should run out, we can always hold our noses and drive back to town for more. You're not making it any easier. Could it be much easier? The lush island of Puerto Rico, a lush villa, and a whole life to be nothing but a lush in. Morning. May I come in? That marvelous. Anybody here know how to roll their own? Evelyn, don't you think you ought to finish dressing? Why? Expecting company? Martin is here. So he is. How are all your family and friends, Mr. Joyce? Delighted you dropped by. How would you like me to dress for the occasion? Evening dress? House dress? Slip. He's going to be here one hell of a long time, Harold. All right. We're in a rotten situation. An unprecedented one. But I'm not going to fall apart, and neither is anyone else, as long as I can help it. Look, you don't build all at once. I didn't make my money in one day. You lost it in 20 minutes. Now, we're going to work out a plan, and we're going to take it step by step. If you take things as they come, if you do them step by step, we're going to be all right. Evelyn. How about breakfast? I'll change first. Evelyn! Martin, come here! What? We have company. Another house guest. Where can we possibly put him? The problem is, where did he come from? He should be dead. He could have hatched from an egg. They can probably live longer on less oxygen than we can anyway. It doesn't look good. There's going to be a lot of decay on the island. These things are going to thrive. Ants, mosquitoes, tropical disease. Sooner or later, we may have to leave. Won't it be the same wherever we go? There's always the Arctic. We may do just that. Go north. Don't you think it's a little impulsive to go north because we may have an insect problem? Now look, Martin, I don't mean tomorrow, and I don't mean the North Pole. But I might mean... Well, say, Northern Canada. Now, to do this, we're going to have to learn how to navigate. And to be self-sufficient, we're going to have to learn how to fish. Right? Right. Not only would we get rid of the insects, but things like disease and food preservation be a lot less a problem. Most of all, we might find people. After all, three of us got by here. More people died there, more people might have lived. Right? 
right. You know I'm right. Fish. Maybe we'll have a salmon up north, like the kind on beer ads. Who knows? We're not leaving just yet. Why? The weather's bad. I don't want to take any unnecessary chances. Harold, it rains down here quite a bit. I know, but this is the worst of it. Besides, you don't, and I don't know enough about sailing to get by in a storm. And without stars, we're dead. What kind of stars? Ones in the sky or ones in your astrology chart? Martin. Ev, I want to talk to Martin. So talk. Alone. Business? Or is this something just between you two fellows? We'll talk about this later. Now look, Martin, I realize we have problems here. Three of them. Yeah, we never did dig up that fourth for bridge. And we won't, staying here. Look, Harold. The sooner we leave, the better for all of us. All right, Martin. It's a tough situation. But we're not leaving this island until we're ready. Now, till then, we've got to force ourselves into a pattern. Keep working till we go north. Martin, the need to work is inborn. It's the only thing that will save our sanity. Harold? I'm not sure I feel any inborn need to work. Now, maybe there's something wrong with me. I don't think so. And there's one other thing I'd like to bring up. This business about Evelyn. What business? This one woman, two men situation. I really don't know what to say. I guess we'll just have to live with it. You mean, uh, I'll have to live with it? I don't see any other alternative. Where are you going? To Evelyn. And so, to bed. We are married, you know, So Martin. it's legal, huh? Harold, look, your marriage certificate means about as much here as your money. That certificate is only paper. My marriage isn't. Harold. 
please don't. That won't solve anything. What's there to solve? You really don't see, do you? Harold, in the last world, you didn't give me a chance to find out where I belonged. You're not doing it in this world, either. I'll tell you where you belong. You're my wife, Evelyn. Harold, please. You're my wife. I'm going fishing. I'll be back. What's new? Not much. Why aren't you fishing? I don't know. Will you uh, see one fish, you've seen them all. Where are you going? Beach. Care to come along? Why not? How does the rest of it go? Beware the Jabberwock, my son. The jaws that bite, the claws that Beware, Beware the jub jub, jub, jub bird, bird and shun the frumious bandersnatch. <laughs> it's fun. I wish Harold could... Where will you be ten years from the second? Running over ice blocks, chasing little gurns, living in a guest igloo, I don't know. Will you be alive ten years from now? I don't know. How could I? I don't want to believe that. Well, you didn't want to believe the world would end either. You don't want to now. Well, it's what I feel. I felt it in. And I'm married to somebody who doesn't insist upon my thinking about it. Or thinking, period. That's marvelous. You think. You are the thinkingest man. Is that supposed to make me feel bad? And do you ask questions? Questions. 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 I think I'm going to erase you. I'm going to take my big toe and wipe you out. Dare me. Double dare me. Seems I remember doing this before. Only then I didn't have so far to fall. Where are you now, Martin? There. Bunny Galore here, the queen of the cult movies. I hope you're enjoying our film for today, The Last Woman on Earth. So, Bunny, if you were the last woman on Earth, who would you choose to be with you? Oh, gosh, Vicar. Well, out of all the men in the world, I would choose you, of course. <laughs> and Zac Efron. <laughs> How about yourself? Ooh, 
I'll have to have a little think about that. All right, then. We'll be right back after these messages. We are about to witness the takeoff of the first manned rocket to outer space. We pick up the count. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero! We're off to visit the planets. There are treats galore in the stars. Venus is loaded with candy. And ice cream is found upon Mars. The soda pops isn't on Saturn. When you're thirsty, it sure hits the spot. And Jupiter's really jumping. With pop on this buttered and pop. But the best of them all is the planet. Where all of these treats are at hand. And that is the spot we now head for. Our theater refreshment stop. Hello darlings, Bunny Galore here, the queen of the cult movies, and welcome back to The Last Woman on Earth. Before the break, I asked the vicar who he would choose as his two other survivors. Well, Bunny, the first person I'd choose is... You! <laughs> and the second person I'd choose is... Zac Efron. Well, darlings... And now for the next part of the movie. You make a nice martini. Naturally. I was taught all the do's and don'ts of gracious living. Tell me about your day. Oh, lunch at 21, shopping at Saks. The most awful sales lady at Saks. She made me want to complain about everybody who'd ever sold me anything. Those sales ladies at Saks will do it to you every time. Where would you like to dine? Before the theater? Of course not. I meant afterwards. Oh. Well, you remember that funny little French restaurant over on 8th Avenue? You know the one. I do. I can't think of its name offhand, but I do. It really is there. Then we'll go there. It really is there. Can't you tell me the name of it? Have. Can't you tell me the name of it? Have, don't. <laughs> <laughs> Start sorting, then we'll take another crack at it. I no longer see the reason for catching fish we'll never be able to eat. All right, Martin. What do you want to do? To look at many things, not just fish. What's the matter, Martin? You afraid if you look at a fish too long, you begin to look like one? Maybe, Harold. Maybe that's exactly what I'm afraid of. Boy, oh boy. It's certainly a good thing the world ended when it did. Because you never would have made it, boy, never. Made what, Harold? A millionaire? Money? Money and fish. Fish and money. Harold, if rotten money smelled like rotten fish, they'd have given you a bank to yourself. Yes, sir, Mr. Gern. The way you made your money stank. The way you catch fish stinks. And furthermore, Harold, you stink.
This is no game no more, boy. It's always a game, Harold. How is Evelyn? Nice? Not bad. But why not find out for yourself? That got to you, didn't it? Didn't it? Come on, let's see you laugh now. You're always mocking all the time. Mock now. You don't understand the meaning of decency. You laugh at it. Go on, laugh. You think living is stupid? Well, why don't you try dying a little? You're leaving. You think that's funny? You'll be out of here in two hours. Where to? Take your choice. You mean you'd exile one-third of the human race? I'd do better than that, and I can't. But you know why you couldn't, Martin? Because you don't have it in you to find a reason. Not yet. So he's leaving, and not just because of what he did to you. Did to me? Harold, Martin didn't rape me. That's enough. I don't want to hear about it. It's not just because of that. We had a balance here, we had a system, and he lost it up. Harold, I know you're hurt, but it never was his system, or mine. Hurt? To begin with, when we first got here, I asked for suggestions. Neither of you had anything but smart remarks. Well, somebody's got to take the responsibility somewhere. Sure, you had a system and we had none, but we needed our own, Harold, not yours. But you never had anything. Never, Ev. Not when I met you. And not when I married you. Your system never really worked for me, Harold. With or without the world, your system's the same. It gives me everything but you. Your money is gone, and what it meant is gone. And you've never really seen that. It meant me. And I'm not gone. And you never really saw that. I made that money. It didn't make me. And what it took to make, I've still got. Then use it. Use it to help. That's what I want to do. That's what I'm trying to do. And Martin? I'll help us by getting rid of him. Harold, Martin is part of us. I'm married to you, not to Martin. To hell with him. Where are you going? Out. What will you do? Nothing. What's that? A little headache. Do you mind going alone? No more than I mind going. Would you mind company? I won't stop you. Ask me, though, Martin. I need you to ask me. Look, Ev. I may not have much love for that man, but I, I couldn't do that to him. What? Leave him alone. Martin, he wanted you alone. I don't think he realizes what that means. Martin. All right, Ev, I do want you with me. We'll run around the world together. We'll take that yacht and set sail, okay? Really? Oh. Really. What'll I need? It's a come-as-you-are party. Evelyn? Evelyn? What's taking so long? Packing. You see, Evelyn? Yes. Where? Here. Where is she now? She left. How's your eye? It still works. Well, when you're ready, I'll be down by the garage to see you off.
Is that all you're taking? That's all. After all, Harold, I'm not the kind of house guest to run off with the silverware. Now, just don't get any ideas about that boat. It belongs to Ev, too. Doesn't a third of it belong to me? Yeah, but two-thirds belongs to us. I defer to your unimpeachable sense of ethics. Now, listen, Martin. I don't have to let you take this car. I know, Harold, I know. Where are you going to? That's one decision you won't have to make. Just give me the keys. Start the truck. What if he catches us? I mean, Harold can be awfully brutal when he thinks he's been wronged. People who believe in wrong and uh, right can be. What do you believe in, Martin? Nothing, Ev. I'm too civilized. Are you cold? A little. the islands until we hit what I hope will be the Florida Keys. From there, we can go right up the coast. Does it hurt? Sort of. It feels like something rolling around in back of my eye. body. Ev, this wheel's been sideways. We're gonna have to walk. Can we make it in time? Well, the harbor's on the other side of this forest. We could cut our time in half. We better cut through here. Check and see if it's all right. Take me with you, Martin. I don't want Come to on, be alone. Come on, Ev. Wait here. I'll uh, meet you at the church, okay? Don't. Don't. Martin, what if we were to have a child? I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we would have a child? Whatever for. What for? Ev, look, it's all over but the shouting as far as the human race goes. And there's no more reason for little Evelyn's and little Martin's running on those ice blocks than little Gerd's. All that's left for us is to live without pain. 
I'll be right back. not taking my boat. You forget. It's only one-third your boat. Where's Evelyn? She doesn't want to see you. She's my wife. Where is she? You never learn, do you, Harold? Your boat. Your money. Your wife. Your world. Nothing belongs to you, Harold. Nothing. Where is she, Martin? No. Leave me alone!
Come down from that altar. What altar, Harold? Come down from there. I don't see any church. What's the matter, Harold? Are you afraid that the biggest banker of all wouldn't approve? There are no more bankers, no more churches, and no more gods. No more pencils, no more books. No more teachers, dirty looks. Pretty silly to stick around and look at after you. I mean, Harold, you can take care of things all by yourself. You can run the world all by yourself, can't you, Harold? Ed? I'm here. What can I do, Martin? My eyes are dim. I cannot see. I have not brought my specs with me. My eye hurts. I... think so. Let's go home. Where is that? Help me find out. I hope you enjoyed the movie, The Last Woman on Earth. Oh, what an ending, Vicar. Imagine two men fighting over the last woman left on Earth. <laughs> you know, actually, I've, I've had quite a few men fight over me in my time. Really? Yes. Anyway, darlings, <laughs> until the next time, from me, Miss Bunny Galore, the queen of the cult movies, bye-bye. Bye-bye.